so far in our study of kinematics, we have talked about vector and scalar measurements and the difference between the two. We've talked about distance and displacement and the difference between those two terms. And now we can take this study of kinematics to the next level and we can look at really start to understand what kinematics really is, the study of motion. And the simplest way to study motion is to look at the speed of an object or its velocity. And so it's going to be really important here to understand the difference between speed and velocity. And it might sound a little strange, but speed and velocity are not the same thing. Although in some situations they might seem like they're the same thing. Given the situation, they can be totally different. And you might not understand that right now. But when we start solving speed problems and velocity problems, you'll very quickly see how these two can be very different from each other in some cases, and yet very much alike in other cases. It just depends on the situation. So let's first of all, let's take a, a look at, at a couple of very simple definitions. The definition for speed is simply rate of motion. And the equation that's used to calculate speed uh, really illustrates that. The equation that's used to calculate speed, specifically average speed, average speed, and that's, that's, a, that's an S with a line over it, average speed is equal to the rate of motion. That means the change in distance, or delta D, over the change in time, or delta T. And you see that that uh, triangle that I put right there, that is a Greek letter delta, and it simply means change. So as an object moves, its distance changes, and that changes over time. Time also changes as the distance changes. And if you look at the relationship between the change in distance and the change in time, you can calculate the average speed of an object as it moves from one place to another. It's rate of motion. Now, how is speed different from velocity? Well, velocity is rate of motion in a given direction. So there's one difference right there. And the other difference that you see really doesn't show up in this in this definition. But it really does show up in the equation that can be used to calculate velocity. So the equation for velocity looks like this. Average velocity, that's a V with a line over it. The line tells you that's average velocity is equal to displacement or change in x and you might you might think that d would be used to represent displacement but in physics or physical sciences the x is used to represent displacement and this says change in displacement divided by change in time and right there in front of you is the real difference between speed and velocity. They both include change in time. But speed is change in direction over change in time. Where velocity is change in displacement over change in time. And why is that important? Because when you look at an object's displacement, that makes this velocity a vector quantity. Velocity is a vector quantity. It includes a direction. Why does it include a direction? Because it's calculated with displacement rather than distance. Speed is not a vector quantity. Speed, because it utilizes direction in the equation. Speed is what's referred to as, again, a scalar quantity. And that is the ultimate difference between speed and velocity. Speed is calculated using direction. 
So speed is a scalar quantity, a scalar measurement, while velocity is calculated using displacement, and that makes velocity a vector measurement. And that's the difference between the two. All right, now we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about this equation that we have for speed and also the equation that we have for velocity, and we're going to solve some problems. Use the velocity formula, v equals d over t, or v equals delta x over delta t, to solve problems related to both speed and velocity. Now, in order to do this, we're actually going to, going to break these equations down. We're going to use two different equations here, one for speed and one for velocity. We're going to simplify this equation and use for velocity, we're going to use v equals x divided by t. And remember, of course, that the x actually stands for displacement and not distance. For speed, we're going to use simply speed equals d over t. So if you have a problem that asks you to calculate speed, you're going to use distance in the calculation. If you have a problem that's going to ask you for a velocity, then if you have a direction, you're going to use that direction because displacement includes a direction. And you'll probably understand this a little better if we go through a couple of problems and that illustrate this in, 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 a, in a graphic sense. So let's just look at a, at a scenario here. Let's say we have a car and this car is going to travel down the road and let me put a road in here, there's our road. The car is going to travel a distance, D stands for distance, a distance of let's say oh, 20 kilometers. So the car is going to travel a distance of 20 kilometers. And let's give it a time here, let's say that the time it takes this car to travel this 20 kilometer distance is Oh, how about 0.5 hours? That sounds about right. That's half an hour. 0.5 hours. So if we calculate the speed, we're going to use this equation. Speed equals distance divided by time. And because, you know, the car speeds up and slows down as it travels from one point to another, it might not be traveling at a constant speed. Speed might actually change a little bit then we have the total distance and the total time so really all we can calculate is an average speed so to indicate that I'm going to put a line above that S so this now says average speed is equal to distance divided by time it comes from that first equation we talked about average speed equals change in distance over change in time we just kind of simplified it here and so the second step is to plug in the numbers and the units from this problem. So the numbers here is 20 kilometers. That's That goes to replace that D. And then underneath that is the time, 0.5 hours. So the average speed, when we work this out, it works out to 40 kilometers per hour. And that's the average speed of the car. Now let's go ahead, we're going to calculate the average velocity. Well, the equation looks pretty much the same. It just says average velocity equals not distance, but displacement x over t. Now here's the important distinction here. The displacement has a direction. And if there's any way you can get the direction, you want to use it. In this problem, the car is moving, it looks like, towards the right-hand side of the paper. And by convention, when you look at a map, north is at the top of the paper, south is at the bottom, west is to the left on the paper, and east is to the right. So this car is traveling east. So here's the situation. When we plug the numbers in here, we have average velocity equals displacement, not distance. And the displacement x is equal to 20 kilometers east. Now in a word problem, it might just be stated. In a diagram, you can always use the direction that the arrow, the direction of the car, or whatever the object is that's pointing. 
So this is 20 kilometers east. And so we're going to say that here. We're going to say 20 kilometers east divided by the time. Well, the time doesn't change. It's still 0.5 hours. And so the average velocity of this car is 40 kilometers per hour east. The E stands for east. And there you can see illustrated the absolute difference between speed and velocity. Speed of the car, look at this, 40 kilometers per hour. Velocity of the car, 40 kilometers per hour east. The difference is that direction. Remember that speed is calculated using distance and velocity is calculated using displacement. All right, let's take a look at another problem. And as we go through this, it, working the problems will help clear up any questions that you might have. So make sure that you pay attention and work through the problems with me. In this case, we're going to start out with a car again. We're going to have a car here. And that car is going to be traveling down the road. And here's our road right there. And we're going to say that, uh, well, from the origin where the car starts to the end of the road over here, looks like, uh, well, let's just say 20 kilometers. And uh, so here's the situation. Our car is going to drive out here 20 kilometers and then turn around and drive halfway back again, right to there. So halfway back. If you look at that, that means that the total distance traveled, we'll, we'll call that D total, just like that. The distance total, the total distance traveled for this car is 20 kilometers over to here, and then halfway back would be 10 kilometers back towards home or wherever the origin is where the car started. So the car is going to be traveling a total distance of, it looks like, 30 kilometers. And let's give this a time. Let's say that the total time is equal to, oh, let's give it 0.75 hours. That's three quarters of an hour. So there's enough information to calculate the speed of the car. So let's go ahead and calculate the speed of the car. Well, we come over here and we know that speed, average speed, is equal to distance divided by time that's change in distance over change in time and we can plug some numbers in here average speed then is equal to the distance which is 30 kilometers divided by the time 0.75 hours and we work that out and that gives us 40 kilometers per hour there is our speed 40 kilometers per hour well let's do something different now let's calculate the velocity of the car just as we did in the last problem calculate the average velocity and average velocity if you recall is displacement delta x over delta t so displacement over time not distance over time does that make a difference here well watch this what is the displacement of this car? Well, remember the definition for displacement. The definition for displacement was the straight line distance and direction between the starting and ending points. Another way to say that is displacement is, the, is how far the object, in this case the car, is displaced from its origin. So the car drove out here 20 kilometers and came back halfway and stopped right there. So the displacement is represented by this line right here. This is the displacement. And that displacement, if you look at it, is 10 kilometers. Because this car is where it stopped over here is now displaced 10 kilometers to the east, there's the E for east, 10 kilometers east of its origin, of its starting point. That's the displacement, 10 kilometers east. 
So when we go back here and calculate the velocity, the average velocity is displacement, which is 10 kilometers east of the starting point. And then we get x is 10 kilometers east divided by the time, and of course the time didn't change, it still took 0.75 hours. And so the average velocity of this car works out to be 13.3, and that's repeating, and that is kilometers per hour east. And there again, very clearly illustrated, is the real difference between speed and velocity. The speed, 40 kilometers per hour. That's a scalar measurement. The velocity, 13.3 kilometers per hour east. That's a vector measurement. It has that direction. Another thing I should point out to you, to keep make sure that you remember this now, is that in this situation, whether or not you call this speed or velocity is exceedingly important. Look at the difference in the answers. The speed is 40 kilometers per hour. It's the total distance divided by the time. Whereas the velocity is displacement divided by time, which gives you a totally different answer, 13.3 kilometers per hour. So there is an important distinction between speed and velocity. And the two equations that you want to remember, speed is change in distance over change in time, while velocity is simply displacement, change in displacement over change in time.